um, Julio, uh, I'll give you a brief overview as to this newest initiative. Um, and then obviously over to you um, to hear about kind of your career successes and challenges, etc. But as you uh, may know, it's obviously the year of um, upskilling the sector. And we are essentially working with Hydrogen Europe and the SEC to basically kind of spread awareness of the challenges and successes that people have had um, across climate change um, and how companies and individuals are going about combating it um, and to help kind of promote people into the sector coming in um, for the industry. So in terms of yourself, do you mind talking us through um, back from kind of London Business School days um, to now as, as to what you kind of you've done uh, throughout your career? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Brogan. And it's great to um, share some of my experience. I'll probably take a bit um, uh, further behind and previously uh, before I joined. Uh, London Business School, because I'm an engineer by background. And then I started my career designing digital solutions for oil and gas companies. And, and, and that's how I got my kind of break on, on the energy industry. Um, and I ended up becoming fascinated by the business side of the industry. And, and I transitioned from digital side, uh, the digital side to become a management consultant. I was advising clients in the industry on how to become more efficient, both in terms of the operational efficiency and in terms of finding the right strategy for the business. Um, and while I was a management consultant, I had the opportunity to work across the value chain in this industry, and it, right across from oil and gas to power generation, from exploration and production to refining and retail. I also worked across geographies from South America to the Middle East and in Europe, and then um, then I did the, the MBA at the London Business School. And with the MBA, um, I had the opportunity afterwards to join the industry um, and then to work across on, on the other side uh, of, of the industry. And um, I had the opportunity to join Equinor, the Norwegian energy company. Um, and that's where I worked to help the company to grow its international business um, and especially after the Paris Agreement in 2015, to start moving in a more determined manner to decarbonize its business and, and start its journey towards net zero. Uh, so that was a very exciting time. Um, and after almost a decade working on the industry side, navigating the full ups and downs um, of the uh, both of the oil and price, but also of the energy transition cycle. Um, today, I had another pivot of my career. I'm back at management consulting, and now I work at uh, FTI Consulting, where my role is to help our clients to be successful uh, in the energy transition efforts, and it both support our clients to invest in new technologies or invest in new clean energy projects to find the most appropriate business models that will work for them, or even to structure and execute transactions that will enable them to implement their growth plans. So that's my role today. That That's the kind of work that I do at FTI Consulting today. Perfect. So as you said, obviously, you've been in um, a lot of different sectors. You've been in a lot of different kind of engineering side, industry side, consulting side. So why did you kind of decide to work in the sector and what mainly drives you today? Uh, that's a great question. And in, in my view, that there are few industries like the energy industry where you feel that you're creating direct value to society. Um, in my view, access to energy is, like, is a fundamental need for societies to develop and to get uh, people out of poverty as well. So this is a global industry, it's a global challenge. And obviously we want this energy um, that will help people to be clean. And we also want it to be affordable. Uh, and we need this clean energy, both in, in both in terms of like electrons and in terms of molecules as well. Uh, so energy is fundamental and we need to decarbonize our energy mix. Um, and we need to do that as fast as we can, but we also need to know very well that there are no easy solutions. Um, and there are trade-offs and dilemmas to navigate. So working in an industry that matters, that matters so much to society and that presents those huge challenges and dilemmas and trade-offs to solve is what drives me and is what motivates me. Maybe that's the engineering me that, that gets excited about all those complex and challenging problems to solve, but I find this industry fascinating. Perfect. And kind of going on that, you mentioned obviously 
as we know, this this industry has many a challenges. Um, so are there any particular challenges you faced? And, and if so, like how did you navigate them? I'll mention a couple of challenges that I faced myself and, and a couple of things that I learned along the way working in this industry. Um, and, and maybe the very first one of that is that it doesn't matter how much you plan for something, things change and, and they change quite fast, right? So this is a global industry and the external context is um, is always prone to shift very suddenly. Uh, and this will influence everything and from the industry sentiment to prices and it, it can be like gas price, electricity prices, hydrogen price and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, I have worked on, on strategies to invest on, on the gas business and, and they have just disappeared when gas price plunged. I have worked on renewable strategies that have been canceled because of low electricity price. So things change quite uh, quite fast. And and the key, when what I learned, one of the, the challenges that I had to overcome is that you have to be resilient to change. And I have created a mindset that I, I know that things will change. Um, and and uh, I believe that I need to have a plan, but the plan should be resilient and flexible. And, and if it needs to be changed, and, um, and, and the context is, is volatile, it will remain volatile, and we need to know how to deal with it. So, so that's one of the things, one of the challenges that I had to overcome, one of, one of the things that I learned. But, but the second um, is also a personal one, which, which is um, I have learned that you don't need to have formal authority over someone to lead them or, or to influence outcomes. Because early in my career, I got stuck believing that I could only influence the outcome of a project or a or of a decision if I was a direct line manager to someone else. And, and that's definitely not the case, right? You need to know how to communicate. You need to know how to build a case. You need to know how to take people with you. Um, and you need that to be effective on your job. So, so that's that's a challenge. That, that's a, um, a lesson learned that, uh, that, that I have taken on my career today. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Um, relationship building and, and things like that are definitely at the forefront of the industry. And even us on the t- on the talent side of things it, it is always kind of the, the forefront and realizing that you can actually influence decisions regardless of, of the, your status um, and where you are. At the end of the day, it's an um, inclusive environment. Um, it doesn't have to kind of depend on hierarchy for, for decisions. Um, I mean, some things are sign off, but... Yeah. <laughs> Um, exactly. That's very true. Um, so on the flip side of that, obviously, we know that this industry has incredible amounts of achievements. So what is your biggest achievement today in relation to kind of fighting climate change? Yeah, um, and I think that might be controversial to some people, but for me, one of the biggest achievements uh, uh, that um, um, I had to date was having helped my previous employer, my previous company, Equinor. Uh, to start its journey towards net zero. Um, we know that emissions from oil and gas companies are huge. Um, and why we change the broader energy system away from fossil fuels, one of the biggest impacts that we can have is, is to decarbonize the oil and gas companies themselves. Uh, that's a great first step. And it's obviously not enough. It, and if we want to go any way further than that, we want to have a full uh, clean energy mix. But that's a huge um, first step that we can make to cut emissions and, and to cut absolute emissions. Um, and I'm a big believer in, in energy efficiency as well. I think that um, the best way to decarbonize an industry is, is by reducing energy usage. So making things more efficient, having work in operation efficiency and, and strategic decarbonization projects. And most recently, I mean, my job is to develop clean energy projects. Um, but I believe that those um, steps that I have taken or, or those contributions that I have made um, have and it had a small share in helping to move the needle in fighting climate change. Yeah, definitely. Any small step is is a big step towards the sector. So that, that's great. Um, so I know obviously some things are confidential um, and at FTI, you guys work on a lot of different ranges of projects. But what are you currently working on to decarbonize um, our industry at the minute? Um, I'm currently working on a myriad of projects. Um, as I mentioned, some of them are strategic projects for clients, but those projects that I work with, they, they involve multiple technologies and a, each one of them um, as important as the other to decarbonize our industry in different ways. So my work today ranges from helping clients with their renewable energy investments, 
all the way to finding the business case that worked for them in hydrogen or carbon capture and storage, for example. Um, and the work ranges from advising clients on how to structure, for example, a project finance model for an investment, all the way to understanding the kind of the policy and regulatory framework that would underpin those investments. Um, and the work can also involve, uh, for example, supporting clients that are devising their decarbonization strategies or their net zero strategies, and that they need help to uh, structure and communicate those strategies to investors. So that is just a, a, a sample, a range of uh, the things that I'm working on at the moment, but gives, that gives you a flavor of um, how my work is helping to decarbonize the industry. Perfect. And we're going to take it back a bit. Um, obviously, you mentioned that you were um, an engineer, um, starting off, obviously, engineering degree, and then and then you chose to take your MBA and go more on the commercial and consulting line. So taking yourself back to that engineering graduate, if you could give yourself three pieces of advice now for the person at the start of your career, what would they be? Um, I Yeah, so I have like a, a couple of things that I, I think are worth mentioning. So the very first is that anyway, I mentioned that I'm an engineer, but um, if if you are coming from a technical background, um, I would give myself the advice that uh, anyway, I you don't need to choose a specific technology to focus on. I think this is something that stresses a lot of people, like making the right bet or choosing the right uh, technology. It can be like wind or it can be hydrogen. Uh, and then people are like, well, if I don't choose wisely, then you know, my career is not going to flourish or it's not going to progress the way that I, I think it will. Um, there is no single technology to combat climate change, and we will need all solutions. So it doesn't matter where you start. I think the, the key point is um, to keep an open mind, um, and we will be able and we'll have to navigate multiple technologies over our careers uh, anyway. So... That that that's I think that that's one um, advice that I would like to, someone to have given me when I started. Um, maybe the, the the second point is that um, this is an industry where you need a lot of optimism and imagination. Uh, the problems are hard, and you know, both in terms of technology and in terms of policy making, and there are you know, there are huge trade offs in decarbonizing a whole. Um, energy system built on fossil fuels, it, it's a hard task, as, as you well know, and it, it takes time and it isn't easy. Um, and it's it, it's quite easy for people to feel hopeless along the way. But the people who succeed are the people who keep uh, their sense of optimism and who have the imagination to envisage new ways of overcoming the challenges. So, so I, think, I think it's quite important. Uh, and maybe lastly, I think something that I believe is not stressed enough, especially on on the technical disciplines, you know, engineering school, for example, um, is the importance of public speaking and storytelling. I think you only succeed uh, if we if we are able to uh, to explain to people to take um, the general public along the way uh, to explain the challenge, explain the trade offs, um, uh, to um, get out of our bubbles and and engage with people in a way that makes it easier for um, for the general public, for um, for people to understand. Sometimes we uh, get too hung up on jargon and on our own industry, uh, industrial challenges, um, and we forget that you know, most people um, need um, um, an easier to understand story to actually engage in this, um, in this very important, <clears throat> sorry, in this very important topic. Um, and those are more than skill sets to develop, by the way. The, those are mindsets. That, it's a mindset that needs to be cultivated along your career. So uh, so I think those are like some of the, the, the key advices that I would like someone to have given me when I started. Yeah, perfect. And um, as you obviously uh, would have seen from, from my talk with London Business School, there outside of their alumni, but there are a lot of people wanting to transition into the energy um, sector, especially the energy transition or climate change sector. There's a lot of people pushing towards a cleaner um, future and, and more kind of interest in, in joining the sector. Obviously, I know that on my talk, I had an incredible amount of questions coming at me as to how can you start your journey? So as well as those three points, do you have anything additionally in terms of advice that you would give someone looking to transition into like our industry? Yeah, 
Um, I, I, I would tell people that are looking to transition in this industry to, to basically to talk to as many people as possible and learn as much as you can about decarbonization, energy transition, or, or maybe energy in general by talking to people because that's the best way to learn about the industry. Um, and that's where also you learn about the things that are not in the books as well. And all the things that work or don't work in the industry um, and, and all the practical stuff that you're not going to find out any other way. And if there's something that I also learned is that uh, in, this is an industry where people are passionate about the, the subject. They're passionate about the areas of expertise. Um, and they're very proud um, of their experience and, and they're very willing to share that exper uh, experience as well and, and their expertise with, uh, especially with younger people. So basically just, just reach out, build your network, learn as much as you can. And then the best way to do that is, is by engaging and, and by talking to people. So that, that's, that's, that's what I think that that's, what, uh, that's the advice that I would give to someone that's looking to transition in this industry reach out, talk to people, learn about the industry uh, from outside the, the, the academic literature, but then they learn about the, the, the practical stuff um, and learn about how it works in real life. In a way. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with that. For me, not being from an engineering background, I've now got to a stage in my career when people ask me what my engineering degree is. And that is just from learning about the industry from people like yourself and, and other key actors where mm -hmm. you, you can just ask people what certain technologies are doing, what certain companies are doing. Because like you said, everyone's so passionate that they love talking, <laughs> uh, which is... And, and people have different opinions as well, which is as yeah. important to understand as uh, as the, the, the technical subjects. It's important to understand the trade-offs. It's important to understand the context. Um, and you need to to have your own perspectives and you need to engage with people. Yeah, amazing. So thank you so much for joining us um, on this initiative. It's obviously great to see the kind of um, the strives that FTI are taking as well across energy transition. And um, I can't wait to see more of your guys' developments, but it's been a pleasure to have you on, Julio, um, and I appreciate your time. No, thank you so much, Brogan. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. No worries.